Hi, this is Jay McClellan, and this is the CNC controller that I built and showed in a previous video. And since I published that video, I've gotten a lot of questions about specifics of the wiring of this uh, controller panel and uh, how to wire up the signals for not only the front panel controls, but also uh, stepper motors and so on. So in this video, I'm going to go over all of the wiring details and uh, show you how to hook it up. And I'll also show some of the related uh, parameter settings for setting up things like motors, etc. As I go through the signal wiring, I'll also switch to the parameter page of the controller to talk about some of the parameters. And um, honestly, not all the parameters are ones that I'm using. And so if I don't talk about a particular setting, it probably means that it's not one that I'm using, not with a, one that I'm familiar with. And uh, rather than giving misinformation about a setting I don't really know about, I'll just skip those. I'll be going through the uh, PDF file that is the manual for this panel, and I'm going to use the version that's available on my website at brainwright.com. So if you want to refer to the manual with specific page numbers or section numbers, you may want to get the same version. Section 2.2 of the manual covers wiring, and in the manual, Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't show the sticker that is present on the shipping uh, units. There is a sticker that shows all the connections right on the back of the unit, and uh, the manual pictures don't show that. Uh, but they do show uh, diagrams of the different ports, and so I'll be going through each of these in the order that they appear in the manual. The power input is very simple. Uh, DC power supply, 18 to 32 volts. I actually have a dedicated 24 volt power supply connected to run the CNC controller panel. Um, and that's separate from my stepper power supply. There's a couple reasons for that. Uh, one, the stepper power supply may be a bit noisy as the stepper drivers switch on and off. They draw fairly high current spikes. Honestly, I don't think it's really necessary to have a separate supply to run the CNC controller for that reason. Uh, but if you were having problems with noise on the power supply, that, that might help it. In my case, however, I'm running the stepper motors with a 48 volt power supply and that's too high for this panel. So I'd either need a separate regulator to drop it down into the 18 to 32 volt range, or as I did, just a, a separate small power supply to run the panel. The USB connection is just for the thumb drive that supplies the G-code programs, and the panel comes with this little extension cable so you can mount it on the front of the panel. Uh, I actually used a similar but different extension cable. They're widely available. Uh, you can get them on Amazon.com. The one I used has a right angle connector on this side uh, just because it fit better. Uh, I didn't have a whole lot of room to mount things inside my control box, so uh, I needed the right angle to route the cable appropriately. Here's the MPG port, uh, manual pulse generator port, and uh, I've gotten a number of questions about this, so I'll go over the different uh, connections on here and how they're hooked up. The, uh, the first thing to consider is the MPG, the manual pulse generator wheel itself. And the MPG wheel that I used uh, is a very, very common type. So you may have a different type, but for, for this kind where it's just a standalone wheel, uh, there are really uh, only six connections. Uh, ground and plus 5 volts on this connector go to the 0 volt and VCC connections on the back of the wheel. And then those just that provides 5 volt power to run the wheel. And then the wheel A and B uh, positive signals go to the A and B connections. And then the wheel A and B negative signals go to the A bar and B bar connections on the back of the wheel. And that's all there is to it. Hook those wires up and, and it should work. Each of the remaining signals uh, normally would be connected to a switch that goes between the signal terminal and ground. So uh, to select, for example, e-stop, the e-stop switch goes between the e-stop signal input and ground. Uh, similarly, the other uh, selection groups are uh, expected to have a switch between these terminals and ground. And so X, Y, Z, and A input go to my rotary switch. And the rotary switch will connect one of those four terminals to ground to select which axis the wheel operates. Uh, it also has a, a fifth position which connects none of them to ground, and that uh, essentially makes the wheel inoperative and that's good if you want to make an adjustment and then turn it to the off position so that bumping the wheel accidentally wouldn't jog the machine. Finally the three uh, X uh, inputs X1, 
X10, X100, go to a rotary switch that again connects one of these to ground and that sets the sensitivity of the wheel. Table 2.1 in the manual lists all of these signals and uh, gives a description of them uh, similar to what I just gave. So you can refer to that table uh, for additional details. Also, uh, right after that in the manual, there's a table for wiring up this particular style of remote pendant. Again, that really doesn't make sense for me because my entire panel is built into a box that serves as a pendant. But if you're hooking up one of these, uh, if you're lucky enough to have exactly the same model, then uh, you may have wires that are these colors and uh, can, can wire it up directly. But chances are, uh, if you're buying a pendant, you'll have uh, uh, possibly some variations on this. So you'll have to look and, and try to find the um, best match for the signals. There's also a note here about a, uh, a single terminal type of manual pulse generator wheel uh, where uh, basically there, there's an A and a B signal but no A minus and B minus. And so you can wire up uh, that style according to this table. On the parameter page there are a number of settings that control the operation of the MPG. Uh, and so you can enable the e-stop signal on the MPG connector, which is the one that I, I happen to use. Um, and you can invert it so that uh, if you prefer to have a normally closed signal then, um, the, and have the switch open it, you can change this from low to high, and, uh, but then the system will be an e-stop unless it is connected. That's actually a little more normal for an industrial type of wiring, uh, but I just use the default of having a low level active. So when I press my e-stop switch, it connects that signal to ground, drives it low, and that puts it into the e-stop condition. The MPG interface type can be switched between standard and serial. Uh, standard is what I'm using with um, the A and B uh, pulse inputs. Serial would be for the serial interface RX and TX, which I'm not using because I don't have that kind of MPG. Uh, you can also set the precision of the pulse generator uh, when it's in the X1 position, and then the precision also can be multiplied by 10 using the, uh, using the switch X1, X10, X100. Here is arguably the most important connector on the back because uh, you're really, most of the other signals and MPG interface and so on are optional, but this is the block that controls the stepper motors and CNC isn't much good without stepper motors. So uh, the signals are fairly simple. Uh, you just have a step and a direction for each of the four axes. Uh, Incidentally, this panel does come in a three-axis version, which is physically the same, but uh, doesn't support the A-axis. Uh, I spent a little bit extra to get the fourth axis, and uh, I think it's worth it because I'm, I'm going to use fourth-axis machining, but that's up to you. At any rate, uh, so we have step and direction outputs for each of the four uh, direction axes. Here's how the step and direction uh, signals get wired up to a typical stepper driver. Uh, most of these are opto-isolated meaning that there's a plus and minus input for each of the, uh, the, for the step signal and the direction signal. And you have to pass current uh, from plus to minus in order to activate the opto-isolated input. So the control panel provides this plus 5 volt signal. There's actually two terminals of plus 5 volt on this group, and they're, they're the same. Uh, and that goes to the positive input on both step and direction. And basically when it activates either the step or the direction signals, the other terminal gets connected to ground internally to the controller, and that's what allows current to flow. The step and direction input signals are configured using these settings in, uh, in the parameter page of the controller. And for each of the four axes, you can select the directional, the uh, polarity of the direction signal, either high or low. And uh, changing that from high to low simply reverses the direction of that axis. So uh, it's actually kind of hard to predict ahead of time what you're going to need, uh, given that swapping any two wires on the stepper motor uh, can reverse the direction. So you basically just set it up and try it. And if the axis moves the wrong way, change this from low to high or vice versa. Setting 416 allows you to set a time delay between the direction and pulse signal activation. I have it set to 500 nanoseconds. That means that the direction signal will change if needed from high to low or vice versa to specify the direction of movement uh, at least 500 nanoseconds before the pulse signal is activated. And uh, if you experience erratic operation or seemingly lost steps, increasing this delay might be helpful.
Stepper motors work in steps where uh, most stepper motors have 200 steps per revolution, although some of them have uh, other numbers of steps. But uh, so normally if you step by an entire step with each uh, signal, uh, it'll take 200 pulses to go an entire revolution. But most stepper drivers support micro-stepping where you can divide a step into more than one pulse. And so the CNC controller works in pulses rather than steps. And you have to enter the number of pulses per millimeter, uh, which is basically the number of steps per millimeter times the number of pulses per step. So if I use 8x micro-stepping, each pulse is one eighth of a step and it would be 1600 pulses for a complete revolution of the stepper motor. And then based on the type of lead screw or ball screw that you use, uh, you have to work out how many millimeters uh, would be traveled in each step. So in, uh, in the case of my machine, it's 251.969 pulses to move a single millimeter in the X and Y axes and 503.938 uh, pulses to move a millimeter in the z-axis because it has a different lead screw. The spindle control output group is uh, very simple, uh, just these five terminals. And uh, you have a common ground, you have a VSO, which is the variable speed output to control the speed of a spindle, uh, and then you have these three signal outputs. M3 slash M5 are the M code, the G codes for turning the spindle on and off. And so those are the ones that I use. Those are the only uh, signals that I use. I don't use the others. Um, but the other M codes that you can put in your, in your program optionally allow you to control lubrication and cooling. And what that means is up to you. Uh, you could use those codes to control just about anything. Uh, you know, lubricant pump would be the obvious use, but you could use them to control other things if you want. Here are the spindle control signals coming into my variable speed drive. Uh, these come directly from the CNC controller uh, through my wiring cable, but they're just directly connected. And I simply have uh, ground, a signal ground connected. The forward signal is connected to the M3 slash M5 output, and that's what uh, turns the spindle on. And then the, uh, the VSO, variable speed output signal, is connected to the 10 volt uh, input terminal. Now, these labels may vary on different variable speed drives, but, uh, but they should be very similar. And so simply wiring these up is not enough. You also have to go into the variable frequency drive control and set the parameters to uh, tell it to use these signals to start the spindle and also to set the spindle speed. And uh, which parameters are, are needed depends on the variable frequency drive. There, there are a lot of variations on them, so you'll need to refer to your own manual if you want to hook up uh, one like that. But the connections are very simple. That's really all there is to it, three wires. If you're going to wire up the spindle control signals, you need to go into the parameter page and, uh, and set some of the parameters accordingly. Uh, in particular, I have my maximum spindle speed set to 24,000 RPM. The output for spindle speed control is 0 to 10 volts. And so uh, this is the, the RPM when specified in G-code that should drive that output to 10 volts, its maximum, and drive this, the spindle to the maximum speed. In practice, honestly, I found it, it's a bit off, and uh, I haven't figured out whether the, um, whether the signal's not actually going to a full 10 volts or whether the spindle controller itself is off a little bit, uh, but it gets it within 10%, and really for practical purposes, that's fine. But don't expect this analog spindle control output to get you exactly to the specified RPM. It should just get it pretty close. You need to specify whether the M3, M5 uh, commands um, will turn the spindle on and off and also uh, a time delay. So I have a five second time delay so that when, uh, when I turn the spindle on in G-code, it'll sit there for five seconds to allow the spindle to ramp up. There's also a setting in the variable frequency drive for the ramp up time, which I also have set to five seconds. So uh, that just ramps the speed up reasonably slowly, uh, doesn't put a lot of stress on things. And uh, so every time I start a program, it turns the spindle on, waits five seconds for it to come up to speed and stabilize, and then proceeds. On the left is the largest group of connectors, and um, in this group, most of the signals pertain to limit switches. Uh, for each of the four axes, there is a plus limit, a minus limit, and a home signal. Uh, so that's quite a lot of signals. 
Uh, I'm not actually using limit switches right now, but uh, I'll talk about how to wire them up. Uh, there's also probe input for uh, for setting the Z uh, travel using a probe, and I'm not using that one either, but I'll talk about it a little bit. Um, and then there's start, pause, and e-stop signals. And I mentioned there was an e-stop signal on the MPG port. There's another one here. And I'm only using one of them. I'm not using this one. Uh, I assume they are functionally equivalent. That is, either one would uh, e-stop the machine. But electrically, they're different. And I'll, I'll show you the electrical difference. All of the signals on this port uh, expect a positive input of about 12 volts to activate them. So there's a COM plus 12 volt output signal on the connector. And to activate any of these signals, you connect a switch between that 12 volt output and the input signal. That's different than was on the MPG port where connecting a signal to ground would activate it. Here you have to connect the signal to 12 volts to activate it. Uh, so I mentioned there's an E-stop signal on both of them. It should do the same thing, but this one is, is different in that you have to connect it to 12 volts to stop the machine. Uh, and then similarly, there are lots of limit switches that I do plan to hook up eventually, but I haven't hooked up yet. And each of those has to get connected to 12 volts in order to activate the signal. The simplest type of limit switch uh, would be just a mechanical, normally open switch, and that's probably what I'm going to use. But the manual also shows the wiring you would use for uh, an inductive proximity switch. Uh, the advantage of an inductive switch is it has no moving parts, and so uh, dust and, and debris can't get into it and follow it. So it's, it's definitely a plus, um, but it's a little bit more involved to wire up, and of course the, uh, the inductive proximity is more expensive. But uh, the wiring is fairly straightforward. The, uh, the COM plus signal just provides 12 volts uh, supply to, the, uh, to power the proximity switch. Uh, you have a ground connection. That, uh, that again is the other side of the supply, and then it has an output uh, that gets wired into, in this example, the, uh, the limit X plus input. So if you want to use proximity switches, uh, it's definitely worth considering uh, because of the immunity to dust and so on. Uh, it's just a little bit more expensive option. Note that if you wire up the limit switches, uh, it's not enough to simply hook them up. You ha also have to go into the parameter page and enable them. I have all of these disabled because I'm not using limit switches yet, uh, but I will be. And also note that you can reverse the direction. So uh, if, you, if you have a normally open versus normally closed switch, uh, the default is for a normally open switch, but uh, you can change this and uh, reverse the direction of the limits um, if you have a different type of switch hooked up. And then uh, probe input uh, would be for a touch probe. Uh, so you can activate a touch probe on the z-axis when you uh, use the probing function to set the zero point of the z. I don't personally use that, uh, but that's what it's for. Since I don't use the probe functionality to zero out the z-axis, uh, here's how I do it. Uh, usually I put the bit in and snug the collet up so that the bit is, is just kind of snug but able to slide a bit and leave it sticking out a little farther than, than I want it to end up. And then I just bring the z-axis down until the bit touches the part and continue bringing it down and let it push the bit right up into the collet because it's, it's loose. And when it's down to where I want the bit uh, so that it's seated in the collet well, then I just tighten it up at that point. Like that, zero out the z-axis and it's ready to go. Uh, I, for me this works fine and it's a lot quicker than using a touch probe, so that's how I do it. Well, that about wraps it up. So I hope you found some of this information useful and uh, thanks for watching.